All right. Uh, hey, so you guys know where you are. This is the Open Government Hack Night. Uh, this is the 116th uh, event of this name. Uh, we are going to have a, a presentation from Bo and Ingrid about the uh, City of Big Data exhibit, specifically around the giant 3D city model with stuff projected onto it. Raise your hand if you've ever been to or seen this thing before. OK, it's awesome. It's free. Uh, they'll tell you more about it, but it's totally worth going to. It's like a tribute to open data in the city of Chicago, and like in many ways, like this community. So uh, you, know, you guys have an exhibit about me, so you should probably go and check it out. Uh, so uh, this is the Open Gov Government Hack Night. Uh, it is Chicago's place to build, share, and learn about civic technology and open data. Uh, I'm Derek Eater. I'm one of the co-organizers, along with Christopher Whitaker here. Uh, and uh, let's see here. Uh, I think the agenda we typically follow is everyone has to go around the room and say hi uh, and introduce yourself uh, and say what you're all about. And then we'll have a brief period for announcements if anybody has apps they'd like to announce. Uh, or events they'd like to share with the group, or job openings, anything of that nature. Uh, and then after that, we'll go and break out into different groups and work on stuff. And we'll we'll get into what that all means uh, a little bit later. Um, so I think uh, should we get started with uh, introductions? There's anything yes. to add? Okay. Um, oh wait, one more thing before we get started, just because I like to know. Raise your hand if this is your first time at this event. Okay, round of applause for the new people. Yay! Um, we have a plan for you. Uh, it involves Christopher, uh, and you will not be hurt. I don't. Uh, so uh, we'll get to the introductions again. I'm Derek. I'd like to make stuff with open data. Uh, My name is Christopher Whitaker. I am a civic technology consultant uh, working for Smart Chicago and Code for America. Uh, Bo Raga. I um work at the Urban Center for Computation and Data at the University of Chicago. I also teach uh, in the Department of Architecture, Interior Architecture, and Designed Objects at the uh, School of the Art Institute. Ingrid Haftel, I'm a curator at the Chicago Architecture Foundation. Oh, that's me? Yeah. <laughs> oh, our fan, uh, uh, just, I don't know. Yeah. Work in IT, I guess. That works. Okay. Uh, go ahead. <laughs> oh. Uh, yeah, um, hi, uh, uh, Blackstar x86. I'm a computer engineer. I've been doing mobile development too uh, for the past two years. I guess. Ben Galuski, I'm a data and co op junkie. Um, I'm Eve Hirsch. I do digital marketing for Walgreens and I also do freelance social media marketing. Hi, everybody. I'm Kristen Zelenka and I'm a designer. I'm uh, Kevin Kubrowski. I'm with um, some some nonprofits. Right now, I'm with a new teacher center that does uh, beginning teacher professional development. Hi, I'm Forrest Gregg. I'm a partner at DataMate, uh, where I work with Derek and Eric and Kathy Deng. And uh, we do uh, we make a lot of apps using open data uh, for various nonprofits and governments. Hi, I'm Ora Lee, and I work with the University of Chicago Crime Lab. Linda Savers, an honorary Chicago. Uh, map of the writing biographies of the people who work around honorary street sites all over Chicago. And uh, now available on Amazon. The book is out. Ooh. Um, hi, I'm Erin Tadeau. Um, I'm a graduate student and working at the mayor's office for the summer. Hi, everybody. My name is Rosa Frie. I am a Starter League student and aspiring Rubyist. Uh, I also I uh, work a lot in civic engagement uh, and app development, and I'm also really interested in making social services um, more accessible through technology, as well as more empowering for people who uh, use social services. Hi, I'm Genevieve Nielsen. I'm currently a student at the University. Hi, my name is Alan. I'm a computer scientist and a software engineer at Close my name is Justin. Uh, I'm a software developer. I do stuff with mostly JavaScript, Maps, and Hi, I'm Meg. Um, I'm trying to teach people how to program. I'm interested in education and how to. Uh, I'm Alex Kelly. I'm a sales guy for a mobile app company, and I'm studying data science. 
I'm Nina Sandlin, and I do digital and data things for Illinois Health Matters, which is an Affordable Care Act uh, outfit. And uh, I'm kind of so. I'm Yasla I run the collection space. We're an open source community for museums um, wanting to use uh, technology to manage uh, museum collections. I'm Tina Kane. I work for a company in Forest City, and we are a real estate management and development company. Hi, my name is Aaron, and I'm all about visual clarity. <laughs> <laughs> that's the only kind. <laughs> Hi, I'm Steve, and I do the GIS for the city of Gary, Indiana. Hi, I'm Steve, and I'm with the UFC Carolina. Hi, uh, Adam Rowe. I uh, do social media for U.S. business. Hi, I'm Andrea. I'm an engineer. I'm Gabe. I'm a data scientist at Cisco. I'm a <laughs> Randy, old, Python, <laughs> <laughs> walking, rolling, buses, trains. <laughs> Uh, this is uh, Steve Luker. He's a developer. He writes uh, Windows 8 and Windows Phone apps. Yeah, he's got his own company, uh, Warren Geek. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Adam Heckman. I'm his buddy. Uh, I am Microsoft's Director of Technology and Civic Engagement. I'm Gavin, and I'm working with Adam this summer at Microsoft and Civic Engagement. I'm Mel, and I'm also with Microsoft, and I write. Windows apps. David uh, Griffin, I'm working on the city's permitting and licensing, putting them onto the web for the city's development. Hi, I'm Carmen. I'm an analyst at a hospital, new coder, and fascinated by policy. I'm Charles Perry, and I do marketing for startups. Uh, my name is Eric Sherman. I'm a GIS analyst, uh, currently working on congestion and study. Uh, through a small consulting firm. I'm also involved in local progressive politics. Uh, I've recently worked on the Ruben Murray campaign for state rep, as well as uh, as for Chicago votes. I'm Jonathan Pichot. I organize the Coke America for Dating Grab in Michigan, and I'm a software developer, and I currently consult with downtown Grand Rapids on their data <coughs> and digital stuff. Uh, Chris Hagen, uh, data reporter at WB. Uh, Michael Jansen, I'm the chairman of a company called the City Zenith, and we're working with the Department of Innovation in the city to build a, yeah, a 3D model of the city, um, putting all of its underground infrastructure as well as the building. And we're looking for app developers, so I'm very excited about it. Uh, I'm sure not. I work as a math tutor in CPS. I have a joint U Chicago math education project. I like education. <laughs> I am GT Roll, and in past life I was a data analyst, but I am now a high school computer science teacher, and I am currently building up a computer science program. I'm Callie Freetag. I'm a social worker who comes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I am Akash. I study anthropology at the University of Chicago, but in the previous life, I was a science teacher. I'm William Montgomery. I'm a software engineer at the University of Chicago. I'm Harris uh, Desai. I lead the mayor's innovation delivery team, uh, working on social services, youth violence, and a uh, very small business. My name is Elmer Mera. I work with the Parks and the Mayor's Office. Mm -hmm. I'm Gordon Mollett, a developer at CityScan. Mm -hmm. My name is uh, Chris Curtis. I'm a software developer for Charlie. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm Richard. I'm a developer at Hours. My name is Brian. We run uh, Education, Jails, and Prisons. Mm -hmm. I'm Daniel Britt. I'm also with the same Mayor's Office. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm Gene Linus, a uh, data scientist at the City of Chicago. Hi, Vicki. I'm a student and I'm interning in software development in the internship. I'm Caroline, also a student in technology at Software. I'm 
to our program manager and the Chicago Treasurer's Office. I'm Sylvia, I'm a project manager for the Metropolitan Planning Council. Uh, I'm Steven, I'm an office trainer, I'm using developing apps. I'm Scott, uh, I'm a software developer, uh, primarily interested in uh, uh, urban sustainability, and I also lead, or facilitate the environmental breakout group. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm Lisette, and I work with Youth Service Project and interning at Smart Chicago Club. Hello, I'm Sonia Marciano. I work for Smart Chicago. And um, please make Jessica also feel welcome. <laughs> Jessica is also part of Youth Service Project Tech Training. And she introduced herself as wanting to break computers and put them back together and learn how to code. So make them feel extra welcome today. <laughs> I'm Norm. I'm a research coordinator for Melbourne Brown Digital. Is that everybody? All right. Uh, what a diverse group, as usual. Lots of backgrounds. Uh, this is why this event is so awesome. We get all these cool people together. Where else can you have all these people come together in the same place? So uh, we'll move on to the next item on the agenda, which is announcements. If anybody has anything they'd like to share with the group as far as uh, apps they have, they want to share, I have one. Uh, <laughs> uh, job openings or uh, newsworthy things, as long as it is civic, uh, tech related, or open data related. Anybody? Chris, you have something? Uh, yes, actually. Well, okay then. Uh, Internet. Here we go. <coughs> well, this is really more about you. I don't know what you're going to say. Uh, uh, I have an announcement. Yeah, please. Um, yeah, so like I said, I'm, I'm doing work for a consulting firm right now that is in the early stages of the project for the Illinois Department of Transportation. And so we're looking in particular right now for uh, potentially an intern to help us, specifically uh, an intern with excellent communication skills. Uh, an interest in transportation planning would be great. A background in urban planning transportation would be even better. Uh, but we just need someone for about five to six months to help us with some interviews and surveys that we're going to be conducting. And so, yeah, if you have any interest in that field, either an internship or potential employment, uh, feel free to talk to me later. Cool, thanks. Uh, you ready? Yep. Uh, hey, wait on those guys. Um, the, they announced the Code for America uh, Summit speakers, and we have multiple Chicago people. Uh, Derek's going to be a speaker. Uh, Damon's going to be a speaker uh, talking about uh, large lots. Uh, Kathy Ding is going to be a speaker. Uh, I'm going to be a speaker. Uh, former CTO Brent Goldstein is going to be a speaker. So we're going to have a lot of people from Chicago speaking at the Code for America Summit. Uh, Code for America is a nonprofit organization that works at the intersection of cities and technology, and they hold their summit every year, uh, bringing together hundreds of people who are in this space, and they're going to hear a lot of talking from a lot of Chicago people. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I'm super intimidated because I go right after, I believe it's yeah, Mike Flowers, <laughs> who's the freaking <laughs> chief analyst officer for New York City, and he's like doing all kinds of amazing things with like data analytics and city services in the city of New York and has been for a while. And then Mikey Dickerson, he's just this guy who fixed healthcare.gov. <laughs> so, you know, yeah, we, have, uh, <laughs> we have 10 minutes yeah, to talk about our stuff. So Demond and I will try to not look like idiots. Right, yeah, exactly. where, where is it? It's in San Francisco. Um, it's actually not super easy to go to this event. It's yeah. expensive. Uh, it's like 1500 bucks or something like that, unless you're invited. Um, although there's other opportunities to go, right? If you're the corporate, there's like a... There's a... Civic, I, think they closed, I think they closed. Is that, that closed? Okay. But in March-ish, there's going to be a Code for America Midwestern <coughs> Summit. It hasn't been announced or anything like that, because I'm still not organizing it. <laughs> <laughs> But that is the plan. So as soon as we get done with one summit, I will start scrambling to get the March one in order. 
Chris, is the content going to be similar, or is it going to be more focused on Midwest? It's definitely going to have more of a Midwestern focus. Um, I'm going to try to keep similar tracks in terms of there'll be an open data track, um, there'll be a civic startup track, because Chicago does not get enough credit for civic startups, of which there are many. And then there'll be a um, more of a general like ecosystem type track. Um, all of this will be organized and put together later. <laughs> but then, but it's coming. So even because this is, this is the problem is they always kept this rather event rather small. And so one of the things I've always heard is we want something here. And so once they got the Midwest Region Brigade going, the Midwest Summit is part of that initiative. So that's coming down the pipe. Cool. Um, all right, so actually I have an, a, a real announcement for me. Uh, we launched a thing today. Yay! So DataMade, uh, the company that uh, Forrest and I uh, are owners of, uh, launched a site with the uh, uh, Illinois Campaign for Political Reform to make available all the uh, election and campaign finance data that the Illinois State Board of Elections collects. Mm -hmm. So they have data going back to 1994 on every registered candidate, every registered political mm -hmm. committee, whether it's for a candidate mm -hmm. or a ballot measure or a party or just ambiguously for something, because that's also in there. Uh, and then we also have itemized expenditures and donations to, to those committees. Uh, and then we have quarterly reports uh, that basically show like the financial status of all these different committees. Uh, so basically, we took all this data that was sort of already available on the Illinois State Board of Elections, and we made it easier to get a hold of. We, Eric, who's maybe not in this room right now, who works at DataMate, basically wrote some scrapers to get all the data and put it into a nice, easily downloadable format. So if you want this data, if you scroll up, just click the green button and you have it, right? As opposed to going through all these like forms and stuff. So this is this is the innovation right here. Uh, and then what we also did is put on the about page. Uh, and Kathy did a lot of this work. Uh, we documented as much as we can could what this data means. So if you've ever tried to look at campaign finance data, it's super complicated. They have to fill out these weird forms at different intervals, and that interval changes depending on how far away you are from an election. You have to disclose certain things for certain amounts. Uh, so we made this table to help you figure that out, and then the data is also in strange format in some cases, like some of the data is just missing, or there's like a seven month period where like they don't have it in the system. So we documented this as best we could, uh, and then we also talk about all these forms that I, that I uh, hinted at, and sort of showing you what they all do and what they're all for. Uh, and this was mostly, like, this is all the Illinois for, uh, uh, campaign for political reform. These guys are, like, experts on this subject, and so we were able to work with them, take their information, and put it into, like, a nice, easily digestible uh, documentation for everybody. So we haven't done anything with this data uh, to present yet, but what we want to do is release it for everybody else to go do stuff with. Um, so you can, anyway, Forrest, give us a great idea about what you can do with this data. <laughs> Well, um, <laughs> uh, you know, in Chicago, there's really probably three or four factions of that are of that are people who have huge pots of money who give it, and you and like there's Emil Jones Jr., the former uh, Illinois Senate uh, president, and there's Michael Madigan who runs our house, and there's the Collegians, who's the current ones. These people don't necessarily get along, and they all have a boatload of money. Uh, and the thing is, if you get money from one of these guys, you probably get a lot of money, and you're not going to get money from anyone else. So it would be pretty interesting to just to say, like, well, let's just take a look and see who are, who are the candidates that get money from Madigan, who are the candidates that get money from Bulletin, who are the candidates who get money from Emil Jones, who are the candidates that get money from Ron. So like and once you have that, you'll basically just yeah. make a kind of cluster diagram. That'll give, that'll tell you almost, tell you about half of what you need to know about Chicago politics. Yeah. So all that's in the data. Yeah, yeah. You could see what the difference or correlation mm -hmm. or whatnot between money and influence. Well, because like, you know that wealth, that worth of each of these individuals, but you also have a major political influence. 
Yeah, I mean, all that kind of stuff is possible. Uh, and we hope it's easier now to do stuff with that. Data. So uh, I'll be around and forced to be around if you guys have questions about that stuff. But please download the data and then go yeah. uh, do stuff. So a couple of things. One thing that we're doing to be working on uh, with this data that we're recommended to is, um, is doing a little bit of uh, deduplicating of the candidates. So many of the candidates appear multiple times. Uh, this is the same person, but they run. So like uh, Ed Burke is both uh, a city councilman and a ward committeeman, and so he shows up twice because those are different offices. Um, so it is actually still kind of tricky to figure out. Uh, you, if you wanted to do something that was really kind of doing more of an analysis, you would have to do that kind of duplication yourself. Mm -hmm. We're going for the candidates and for the officers. We're gonna we're gonna take those two data sets and actually do some linkage of that, uh, and we'll provide that as an additional file. Yeah, that's, uh, actually, that's actually a really good point, especially because there's a lot of <clears throat> places that money can go for a committee and there's a lot of things you can do with that money that a candidate can't necessarily do. And so there's can be a lot of differences between tasks that might be formed for the committee versus you know uh, friends of Organization for a specific candidate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, part of that, but part of that is kind of there are parts of that where we're just going to need some um, bodies to actually kind of go. A lot of this we've automated, but we're going to need some bodies to actually just kind of look at these things and say like, yeah, these are actually the same person or not. So if you want to help with that going forward, that's <coughs> great. And another thing that we're not, we're not, we're not going, we're not committed to do ourselves, but it could be really cool. Would be to take this data and turn it into uh, a notification service or a real-time mm -hmm. uh, uh, API that you could program against. So the thing is, is that like, or even just something that you could, probably, someone probably could hack together tonight would be just to say like, here are all the contributions that came in today, right? Mm -hmm. You know, and like that would just, and then so you didn't have to re-download everything. Um, all that stuff would be would be useful. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, anyways, that's that. Uh, please use this data. Uh, any other announcements? Yeah. Hi everyone, I'm Char again um, with the City Treasury's office, and I'm here to announce um, the Chicago Financial Empowerment Hackathon, which is going to start next week. Um, it's actually part of a, a national financial empowerment hackathon um, that's going on in San Francisco, New York, Miami. Um, each city is having a local financial empowerment hackathon, and um, their communities are developing um, apps that can help people build financial skills or can help organizations that serve people that um, so that serve their clients that um, work in financial that need financial education or financial skills and uh, each city is selecting a winner and those um, the winners of those apps um, or the the apps that win um, actually went on to a national competition which will be in early September. And so we're going to be um, doing running Chicago's next week is going to be a separate group um, that will meet during the Open Go Hack Night. And we're going to have some organizations that um, work with clients in, in Chicago present the challenges that they often, uh, that their clients often experience. And um, we'll be setting up some small groups and small, small teams where you can work individually to develop uh, apps uh, or tools that would, be, that would be useful for them. And then we'll have a small panel of judges probably in three weeks or so that we'll select the winner. And um, they'll get a cash prize, they'll go on to compete in the national event. And if they win the national um, hackathon, they will actually, um, their app will be presented to all the cities um, that do financial empowerment work. And so I have some flyers um, that kind of explain um, the hackathon in more detail. And of course, you can come talk to me too. I'll be here tonight. So, can you briefly tell us what the, like, what who the city treasurer is and what that office is and what they do and why 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 a, why a citizen of Chicago should should care about that office. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so our office we do a lot of work around financial education and financial capability. So we work with a lot of local organizations that uh, do financial education that do financial uh, counseling and we also um, on a local, state, national level um, advocate for policies or for consumer protection policies, particularly around um, financial services. And so uh, we're, we're going to be off, um, we're kind of ramping up our efforts um, around financial inclusion and financial empowerment in the next few weeks. And 
So, uh, so this is one of the, the mm -hmm. new things that we're we're trying. Cool. So it's one of the it's one of the three citywide elected positions, right? Mm -hmm. And what's the name of the city mm -hmm. treasurer? Oh, Stephanie Neely. And what is like what is her so like this is not part of her official this is not part of the like of the this is something really awesome that she does but what is the what is what is the core job of the city treasurer's office? I mean the city treasurer um, she you know kind of manages the, the investments for the city um, she sits on a few pension boards too so but um, part of her duties are also to uh, promote financial education financial literacy in the city. Cool. cool. Awesome. Um, any other announcements before we get to the feature presentation? All right then. Uh, so I believe Ingrid's going to go first, followed by Bo. Um, oh, we're going to do a laptop switching situation here. Great. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Ingrid Hafsell. I'm a curator at the Chicago Architecture Foundation. Derek um, gave you the best possible reason to come see uh, the Chicago City Open <coughs> Data exhibition. It is very much about open data. Um, many people actually in this room contributed or um, gave support in some way or another. Um, but really, this is an exhibition that looks at why data matters for cities. And more importantly, why data matters to the people who live in cities and also design and plan cities. Um, and <laughs> um, that's just a pretty photo. I included this because that's a great photo of our city model, which um, we're going to talk about. Bo specifically is going to talk a little bit more about. Um, but it's a free exhibition open to the public. Um, I encourage you to come down and check it out. Um, I would like to preface this by saying the work that we do really is intended for a broad public audience. So a lot of what we work with folks here, but also throughout the city um, on was interpreting terms like open data, making it resonate um, with an average citizen. And if you go to the next slide, um, we tackle some interesting data literacy issues in the exhibition too, which I think is worth calling out. So it's very much about kind of building a literacy, but then also looking at what's going on in Chicago as a whole. Um, and next slide. I just wanted to give you a couple examples of the types of things you'll see there, because it will set up what Bo will talk about um, pretty well. We collaborated with um, IBM City Forward team on experimenting with a dashboard for the city, um, looking at different types of in, um, urban indicators and also real-time um, information as a way of um, kind of looking at how we can visualize available open data. Um, another example of this was a collaboration with architecture firms Skidmore, Owings, and Merrill. Um, and, uh, uh, interactive design firm called Truthlot. So we, uh, the city helped us get our hands on already open data that helped us uh, get it in a clean way, a bunch of 311 calls, uh, over nearly 7 million tweets that are geocoded. Um, and what else do we have? Divi, the um, public data that Divi opened up. Um, and we mapped that on a digital model of the city um, as a way of kind of envisioning what the future of this data might look like, asking some questions about how urban designers, citizens, and planners might use this data. Um, on the next slide, I wanted to highlight a project that was created um, with uh, Juan Velez in Open City. Um, this is probably, this is actually not the best way to see what this is. Um, the best way to see it is in the exhibition. I think it's the highlight of the exhibition. It's a gigantic map that's showing building age throughout the city, the entire city of Chicago, printed on this really nice tension fabric. Um, and that was done um, with open data, um, and we paired one with a graphic designer who came up with a really beautiful color scheme for it. Um, and the next, oh yeah, ah, this is <laughs> so just in case, just in case you were confused, um, this exhibition is a love fest between the open and Gav, um, community. Um, there's also a whole video in the exhibition about what goes on at this room. So I wanted to call that out too, and I couldn't help but grab that to you. Uh, uh, next, please. Thank um, you. Also, interesting thing this is um, right now, for a short time only, the only place in the city where you can see an open, or a working prototype of the array of things node that will be rolling out in the city soon. Um, so that's what you see right there. And around it is a look at um, where data collecting infrastructure occurs in the built environment. Again, a way of building literacy for seeing data in the city around us. 
Um, finally, uh, this is a really bad picture of a really great docent. Um, this gentleman gives tours of historic Chicago buildings. He has now learned a tour that is helping people see data in Chicago. Where is it being collected? So you see this big belly trash can behind him as kind of a metonym for data collecting infrastructure throughout the city. Um, we're doing so this walking tour that parts monthly. Um, we're using uh, mostly, we're trying to get our graphics really boost them, but a lot of screen caps from the city's data portal, apps available throughout the city, getting people out onto the streets to kind of build a connection between what they see um, online and the city around them. And I'd like to finish with um, a shot of our model because this is what Bo's going to talk to you about. Thank you. Um, so we are experimenting, and Bo actually has much better pictures, um, but we're experimenting with projecting um, open data onto our 3D model of the city. Bo really spearheaded this and was the brains behind um, getting the data, getting it into a shape that it could be projected. Um, what I thought I would just tell you is that this is a really fantastic object, but it's important to know a few things about the model. It only covers 2% of the city. So um, the southern border is about um, Roosevelt, to the north, Division, and to the east, Hals I'm sorry, to the west, Halstead, east, the lake. So it's a great object. It helps you see downtown, but again, it's only 2% of the city. Um, and it's also a living document. So this is something that we update yearly. When a building comes down or a building goes up, we update the model. And you can see the beautiful map made with open data right behind it. Um, that was just my scattershot introduction to the exhibition. It's really about um, Bo's process and what he brought to it. So with that, I will introduce How long is it going to be up? It's going to be up through October 2015. Um, so we've got plenty of time. Um, and I should say that uh, the reason I'm here tonight and the reason Bo is uh, talking to you is partially to really talk about how this whole project loops back to um, a lot of stuff that Bo learned here, but also um, looking to the future of what we might do with this model. Um, so it's something that CAF really wants to have a conversation about uh, what might go up, what might be projected on the model next. I know. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, this, can I actually pull this a little bit further? Do we have any yeah, questions? As, far as, far as, as, as far as it gets. Um, all right, so I'm just going to try to hold this because it's just easier. Because I can't think for that. Um, so, uh, how to start? So, about I guess about two years ago, um, I got called into this crazy meeting of uh, I met Ingrid that day and a bunch of other people, and we were standing in front of the model at the Architecture Foundation. And they said, "What can we do with this? Because it's this awesome object. It's got uh, it's incredibly curated and, and maintained." record of the, of the city. The actual uh, 3D files that go to the model is maintained um, kind of as a document. And the thing is, though, is after about uh, about 10 years, it's about 10 years, isn't it? Mm -hmm. How many years? Only four. Only about four years. The model. <laughs> <laughs> three years. Yeah, well, 3D, sorry, 3D printers. But, but they said, well, uh, you know, everybody's kind of seen this. Can, is there something we can do to actually kind of line it up? Uh, kind of give it a 2.0. And I said, well, the only thing you can do is um, obviously uh, we're going to have to project on it, um, <laughs> which everybody thought was a completely stupid idea. <laughs> um, and I did too for a long time. Um, about me, um, I used to work at Argonne National Laboratory. Uh, while I was there, I made a number of like energy dashboards and uh, helped them kind of see how much energy they were using. It was, it was a lot of fun. Um, also teach the Art Institute, obviously. Uh, I'm a research fellow at the Urban Center for Computation and Data. Uh, that image right there is actually a project that I worked on called LakeSim. It's like a massive urban planning simulation tool. Um, and here's another image. This is actually an image of uh, the lakeside development uh, down south that is in planning, probably Good things, bad things, everybody's got an opinion. Um, uh, no, this is actually like a visualization of like the expected energy 
utilization. <laughs> <laughs> no, but there, there, there are some big buildings there. Um, so that's that's one thing. And then I also have like a design company called Chai Lab. And um, over there is our 100 pound unfolding folding solid bron cast bronze chair. It doesn't fold. Um, <laughs> so we just, we just thought it would be ridiculous making a you know, $7,000 chair that you can't fold. Uh, and, but you can't see that at the uh, Chicago Cultural Center right now. It's on show at the uh, Chicago Design Show. And uh, this is our latest thing. It's called the bullion lamp. It's called the what? It's called the bullion lamp. So basically, it was real quickly. Um, if you can kind of see the interior geometry, it's basically a hand blown, hand -blown glass lamp uh, that we used. We actually took a, a utility light to impress the grooves. So it's like a hand blown utility light. Um, so back to what I'm supposed to talk about. Uh, <laughs> The 3D a 3D printed model, uh, Chicago plus data, how do you do that? So I went back and kind of started exploring what we could possibly do. I got a copy of the, uh, of the uh, city model file and basically in SketchUp and uh, made these renderings that says, you know, we can do this. It's not, not a problem at all. Um, so first thing to do. <laughs> First thing you do is figure out, well, if you use a projector, will it even look okay? Does it, does it even read? So this is me at like 2 in the morning or 1. It's 2 degrees outside. I'm on a cherry picker <laughs> uh, holding a projector with one hand and my iPhone with the other. Um, Our office projector, by the way. Like yeah. The old video, right? Yeah. Yeah, so this is basically your, the screensaver. So figure that one out. <laughs> Um, so obviously the next step we have to figure out how to do it. Uh, so as I said, the, uh, the CF has this amazing digital file. If you ask and I say maybe they'll let you use it. I don't know what that <laughs> um, But anyway, so it's, incredi it's incredibly detailed. Uh, even like the floors of some of these buildings are modeled out, like City Hall. Uh, which was why my computer was crashing all the time. <laughs> um, so we had to get it into um, a, uh, a format that I could work with. So what I did was I basically took and poured it into a program called Cinema 4D. It's an animation program. Um, it's used in all kinds of commercials, all, you know, basically just 3D animation. And uh, we created a number of ways to actually take, say, a standard image and then project it onto the virtual model. Uh, so at least we could, you know, somewhat color buildings in a in a planned way. Uh, the next step, obviously, is to figure out how to make a single flat map correlate to the 3D model that we're, that we're going to be projecting on. Um, so, so essentially, we basically took all the data from uh, the data portal and used QGIS to plot the data. Um, and then basically use the same map over and over and over so that we can swap out new data sets. Uh, so you start with your QGIS, which some of you have used probably. Mm -hmm. If you have it, it's great. Um, then basically bring it into Photoshop. So imagine if you're projecting from about 15 or 20 feet away, what is one pixel off is actually about an inch off or two inches off. And if you have 500 buildings, a thousand buildings <laughs> being off by you know a hair uh, is uh, way off. So you can see how each one of these buildings is kind of perfectly mapped to that, which means you're basically zoomed in to like ten thousand points in, and you're literally dragging the thing, you know, pixel by pixel. It was awful. <laughs> um, so the next step was kind of planning out where these projectors were going to be. And then basically, this is actually a, a we got somebody there with a camera, and we uh, basically found where that projector would be inside the virtual model, and then composited it back into everything lined up. Uh, here's a kind of image of where all six projectors are. So each projector is essentially looking at, or in this case, each camera is looking at the angle from which 
the projector would be projecting. Um, so if we take, if the, all these are correct, and we color the model, and then take one image from every, every single angle, then we can actually reproject on all six sides of the model. Mm -hmm. um, so here's a image of what each one of those cameras looked like. And here's kind of like what the actual projectors are projecting. So uh, curating the data. This was actually an interesting problem for us. Um, a, what's appropriate to project? I wanted to like show like you know narcotics arrests and uh, <laughs> where, where's all the, where's all the like Grand Theft Auto and batteries and. Uh, and got, you know, uh, tour, major tourist destination, right? So it's the gateway yeah. to Chicago. Please, like, it's like, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> it's like welcome to Chicago and get your ass goodbye. Um, uh, so af after a little while, Anchor comes to me and says, but we, we just can't do it. We're going to have to tone it down a little bit. So um, we basically decided to do five very basic um, things just because, I mean, this is, we're still even trying to get it done by the time the exhibition is opening. Uh, so we decided to go with downtown zoning, um, electricity use. There's a 2010 data set um, that was published, I think, last year. Uh, building age, landmarks, and potholes, which is our most risque. <laughs> uh, I know. It, it, this is like a data. So. Um, so the first one is downtown zoning. Obviously, the, the data source is the city of Chicago. Uh, the color scheme is the same as uh, what is it? What's it? Second city. Oh, second yeah. city zoning. Oh. Yeah. So I, I just took a, a cue off of second city zoning, which took a cue off of uh, some city. Do that. Yeah. <laughs> um, it makes sense. Uh, and obviously, the same process that I told you about earlier. What's weird about zoning in the city is basically. You know, what's zoned for development is like literally three quarters of the city, so you can't really tell what that is. Um, but we, we rendered that out. Here's your, your views. Um, the uh, 2010 electric consumption. So since a lot of building owners don't really want to have their buildings energies published, um, we're trying to change that. Uh, it's basically correlated to census maps. Uh, so obviously, Sears is like the only building where you get the whole building. Uh, and it's obviously the biggest consumer. And then there's that projection. And then building age actually just used the same data set as the previous one, unlike what Juan Pablo did with the, with the large back map. Uh, and then Chicago landmarks. Um, we were actually concerned that this wouldn't even work because we did we still didn't know how precise we could actually hit the buildings. Would it even make sense? Could you see it? Um, and we were relieved that it actually kind of did. Um, so here again, it's just kind of like a very abstract image that's still perfectly mapped. Um, so potholes. Uh, this one I actually had to do something a little bit differently. Um, rather than just using QGIS and Photoshop, I actually used uh, Cardo DB. If any of you have ever used that, um, it's super easy. It's fun to play with. Uh, you really don't have to be a programmer to use. And they've got a library called Quark, uh, Torque, uh, which allows you to kind of do time series data sets. So what I did was um, I basically did one where it kind of this this basically shows from October all the way to like May, um, and obviously each time there's a there's a pothole reported. It drops, it leaves a dot. Um, and then uh, I exported those into uh, uh, After Effects and then made a new video. Um, so here is kind of like an animation of the kind of control system. Mm -hmm. So about the potholes? Yeah. Do they just flash and then disappear, or do they sustain for as long as the pothole is actually? Well, you, all right, so you got me there. <laughs> so the city would like for me to have taken them off when they get fixed, and I, and I was really more interested in just seeing how many potholes there were. <laughs> um, so if I can zoom up. So by May, this is, you've, you've kind of got, 
A water bottle. <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, you can also see where people, and if you, have, if you actually look at potholes all over the city, you can actually see where some people are more concerned about reporting potholes and some people right. just don't care. Um, so and another thing to note about closing them, it's actually not super easy to tell with the data if the pothole actually, the, the, the ticket gets closed. Right. So I don't even know if it would be possible to pick it off the map. Yeah, I mean, I, I, did actually, I did actually remove all of the second and third and fourth entries of the same model, mm -hmm. um, which was difficult. And no, it wasn't too bad, actually. Um, so I wanted to be at least a little honest. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So, um, so how do we actually get it finally mapped up and fixed uh, correctly? Here's a test that we were doing earlier. Um, down at the bottom, you can see we actually had the polygons of the, of the virtual model. Um, we used actually a VJing software. Um, uh, a company called DC, DC Bolt uh, helped us with the. Uh, some of the very high-end technical stuff, and and as far and also kind of like the enterprise control system, um, and we actually use like VJ software to manage all of the videos and all the content. Uh, it's called Resolume. Um, it's pretty common VJ software, from what I understand, and uh, with that you can actually do 3D mapping applications because uh, every time a projector gets bumped, it has to be fixed again. Um, so here is the opening night. Here's our friend John Tolva telling us where he lived as a boy or something like that. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I think Eric is somewhere in there. Yeah, there he is. There's Derek. Um, so this is something I, I actually found the other day that makes me incredibly proud. So in 2013, that was the proposal that I sent to them. And that's a picture of the opening night, um, which uh, I just love it. Mission accomplished. Mission accomplished. <laughs> um, so what's next? Um, you know, I, we said it's a platform, uh, and we certainly have a lot, a long way to go before it's like a very open platform that, where we would like for it to be which is something where you can actually come and maybe do a hackathon uh, there with data on the model. Um, and we still have ways to go on that. Uh, you know, there's more, uh, it is a nonprofit, so, you know, we still need more investment. But, um, you know, I think it's a great start. And really the goal here was to expose people to data and expose people to this data story. And the, kind of the greater theme of the city of big data is really educating people and, you know, making a big flashy 3D projected model seemed like a great idea. <laughs> uh, so this is the very final, you know, kind of, so that's basically Sears. You can see it's actually red. I was happy to see that. What, what model, what, what are you, what data are you showing here? So this is actually, that was, uh, previous was energy. Uh, this is building age. Um, no, we're, we're still on energy. Right. So um, it's actually redder. At night, it looks a lot better. That's the other problem with, with the uh, with the models. We're actually in an atrium. <laughs> Light projection, not good. Um, that's the uh, uh, city age and landmarks. And then finally, um, Here's our potholes, <laughs> which kind of looks like plasma bombs. <laughs> um, Is the whole city going to just like explode? <laughs> well, there's some really cool stuff you can do with projectors in the city model. Uh, you know, we had to kind of keep it on task with the narrative, but <laughs> like, I've really got a Chicago Fire one that I want to do. Um, so, burn it down. Uh, <laughs> No. Um, yes, yeah, so that's it. Uh, thanks for your attention, and um, you know, I'll be around if you guys have any questions. And uh, that's it. Thanks. Cool. Uh, cool. So thanks, guys. This is great. Um,
I think Bo can stick around if anybody wants to talk about maybe potentially uh, trying to get some data of your own predicted on the model. That's something that uh, is a possibility. So if you're interested, you have some ideas. I think that that would be this would be a good starting point to have those conversations. Okay. Uh, as far as actually, Christopher, could you connect <coughs> your laptop? So now is the hacking portion of the evening. Uh, but before we do, uh, we've tried we've been trying something new over the past couple months. We're breaking out into different topic-specific groups. So we have topic facilitators. Some of them have already identified themselves. Uh, but we'll just really quickly run through the, those groups so you can sort of see what's out there. And then we actually invite you guys to start your own uh, groups if you're interested. So I think there's going to be one about financial empowerment uh, if you're interested in that one. So um, Oh, I have one last thing to say. Oh, your <laughs> Twitter account thing. is both. And the very last thing to say is, um, when I came here a year and a half ago, I didn't know how to do any of this. And a lot of this stuff, you know, kind of had to figure out and Google a lot. But it was this hack night group that got me using QGIS and kind of learning how to work with the data portal. So it's a great, great thing you guys do. Awesome. Yeah. So so I just wanted to actually you scroll down this a little ways, Christopher. We have all of the groups uh, listed on the website. So the first one is uh, the orientation slash Civic Hacking 101. So you knew people who identified yourself or chose to identify yourself. This is this is your guy. So if this is your first time here, you've never heard of JavaScript, you don't know what GitHub is, some of this make you seem, makes you seem lost, this is the, this is the uh, breakout for you. We'll go over basics of open source, open data, show you some examples of some projects we've done, and sort of give you the rundown of how these nights work. Uh, that will be in here. Uh, it's about 15, 20 minutes, uh, which leaves you enough time to jump to the other uh, breakout groups if you so desire. Cool. Uh, the next group is new coders. Are Carl or Demond here? Uh, Randy, you've been kind of running the new cars. I am just the physical presence that they can see. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so this is a group for people who are um, are interested in learning the program uh, and want to sort of get started on a on a project, uh, just uh, something like sort of simple, just to get your uh, hands dirty on something. So uh, Randy shall be your uh, your beacon. Um, we'll we'll be out there. So. And yeah, we'll be out there. All of these groups, by the way, are, are uh, we're going to use the rest of the exit mm -hmm. space. Uh, transportation, Stephen Vance, you got something to uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, So I'm a transportation reporter for Streets Blog Chicago. It's a blog uh, that writes about policy and transportation issues in the city. And today we will be discussing how to measure the performance of Divi bike share rebalancing efforts. So. Uh, they have these blue vans that bring bikes around the city to rebalance where the customers are not rebalancing them with their normal you know, trip making. Um, and there have been some complaints in the past uh, few weeks from customers that they're uh, doing a poor job of rebalancing. Um, and so there's a high number of empty or full stations, which depending on your trip purpose is useless. And so you have to find the next station. So we're going to see if we can use their real-time data to see the number of open and or full and empty stations or if there are better ways to measure this performance. Uh, and the education group, Josh and Elma is out here, but maybe Boris, you want to talk about what you guys are working on? Sure. So we're working on uh, an application to make it easier mm. for uh, parents <laughs> and kids uh, who are uh, school age to figure out what schools they might want to apply to and then apply to those schools. So right now we're in a phase where we're really um, just trying to uh, get uh, an understanding of all the different types of programs that uh, actually are available just in CPS. Uh, we're gonna, we'll, handle, we'll handle the private sector later. Uh, and uh, so we have a bunch of we have a bunch of kind of we have a bunch of data gathering and, and kind of organizing that uh, that we can use help with. So um, no programming experience really required at this stage. Uh, and then we have environment groups. Scott, what you got going on? Hi, Scott. 
so uh, we have one group of people right now that uh, don't have recycling in their building, and they're pissed because <laughs> uh, it's the law. And so uh, we're working on an app uh, to crowdsource that data about which building, which residential buildings uh, around town uh, do not have them. Uh, also, we're kind of looking to spawn off something new. So if you are into environmental issues, uh, uh, interested in, you know, I'm, I'm really interested in, in rainfall and beaches right now. So if you're interested in that, or uh, you have your own uh, pet issue that you'd like to uh, bring to the group, uh, yeah, come hang out with us. Cool, awesome. And then uh, city data, Gene, what do you got? So uh, we uh, will be in the back in the uh, OCA room and. Uh, if you've come before, please, this is a good time to come again. Uh, we have some updates and uh, some things to talk about. And we'll be looking at some code and data. So, and if you haven't been here before, the uh, thing that we're working on is building a predictive model to try to predict vacancy. And uh, But before we predict it, we are going to try to first identify it, which might seem obvious, but uh, it's not. <laughs> just <the day. laughs> and just so you know, the OCA room is if you turn right down this hallway and turn left at the end, it's one of the, the first room with the glass uh, the glass wall there. And there'll be free beer, but it's BYO. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying if you have beer, please bring the beer. Uh, great. And then the last one is uh, social service delivery. Uh, do we have? Oh, yeah, sure. sure. So Charlotte's not here, um, but I'm Erin, and we have been working on two different projects um, about making social service delivery better. Um, one is a um, eligibility screener, and then the other is a platform that both providers and clients could use to sort of facilitate the referral process and track progress over time. So if you're interested in social <laughs> services, please come chat. Cool. Uh, yeah, Randy? I, I thought I should stand up first because the beacon is not very good if it's sitting down. <laughs> and the other thing is I think last week y'all decided that in the interest of learning what recursion means that the project for the new coders would be a project to teach new coders how to code. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, that's great. And then I think there's this other, uh, this new group about financial empowerment. So. Um, are you looking to just sort of have a conversation with people and gauge interest? Or yeah, do you have uh, it'll start formally next week, but I have flyers. If you're interested, I'll probably just put them out back there on the table so you can pick them up. Um, yeah, it'll start next week. Uh, but yeah, feel free to talk to me if you have any questions. Okay, great. And then any other groups? Yeah, Nina? I, I have a public service announcement about the uh, big data exhibit, mm -hmm. which is for people who haven't gone. And you know, and this would like uh, encourage you to go. In addition to it being awesome, uh, if you're there to see the exhibit, the CAF will let you use the bathroom <laughs> in the building. <laughs> 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 uh, okay. Uh, and on that note, uh, we're gonna. Uh, thanks for coming. Uh, we'll see you all next week. Uh, go forth and hack. Oh, thanks to Code for America for the pizza. Yay, food. Uh, I, Code for America. Uh, and yeah, thanks again, guys. We'll see you next week. Cool.